So, to finish up the section on exponents, section P2, we're going to look at some examples from the homework in this section. Now, looking at number 60, this is on page 20 of the textbook, we're presented with the problem to simplify x to the 3 fifths times 5x to the 2 thirds. Well, the first thing we have to do is just realize that this dot is also between the 5 and the x to the 2 thirds. All we're doing is we're multiplying three things together. This, this factor times 5 times this other factor. So with multiplication, we can rearrange however we like. So let's put the 5 out front followed by x to the 3 fifths and then x to the 2 thirds. So all we've done is we've just rearranged these terms. Now according to the property of exponents when the bases are the same and I'm multiplying them together that has the effect of adding the exponents. So this is the same thing as 5 times x to the 3 fifths plus 2 thirds. Now, in order to finish this off, we need to add 3 fifths and 2 thirds. So adding fractions, we need a common denominator. And the least common denominator between 5 and 3 is 15. So I need to multiply 5 by 3. So I do that to the top and bottom on the first fraction. And to make 3 into 15, I need to multiply by 5. So when I'm done with this multiplication, this is 9 fifteenths plus 10 fifteenths. Now that the denominators are the same, we can add the fractions. And so we get 19 out of 15. So this is what our exponent is going to be. 5 times x to the 19 over 15. Now let's take a look at another problem. Something like 66 on the same page. This is, let's see, parentheses. 16x to the 4th, y to the 6th, all raised to the minus 3 halves power. And once again, all we're doing here is simplifying this expression as much as possible, trying to make it as compact as we can. Well, We've got three things we're multiplying together again inside the parentheses. And the rules of exponents tell us that when we have an exponent to an exponent, the way we deal with that is we multiply the exponents. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. First thing we want to do is that exponents distribute over the multiplication. So we can write this as 16 to the minus 3 halves times x to the fourth to the minus 3 halves times y to the sixth to the minus 3 halves. Now, having an exponent to an exponent, now we can multiply. And that'll take care of these last two, the x factor and the y factor. But here, we don't seem to have an exponent. Well, if we don't have an exponent, we can always make it 1, because anything to the first is just itself. So we haven't changed anything here. 
So this is going to be 16 to the 1 times minus 3 halves times x to the 4 times minus 3 halves times y to the 6 times minus 3 halves. And so 1 times anything is just itself. This is 6 to the minus 3 halves. 4 times minus 3 halves is minus 6. And 6 times minus 3 halves is minus 9. Now, we can do something here with 16 to the minus 3 halves. Because with the half in the denominator, what we're doing is we're taking the square root. So taking the square root of 16, actually, let's just do it this way. Let's worry about the negative first. So if we take care of the negative, when the exponent is negative, what you can do is just put the whole thing in the denominator with one on the numerator and change the sign of the exponent. So this becomes 16 to the positive 3 halves, 1 on top, x to the 6th just moves to the bottom, and it goes from a negative to a positive. y to the minus 9th, we just move the y to the 9th in the bottom, making sure our exponent change signs, and have a 1 in the numerator. So now we're just multiplying fractions. So we multiply the numerators just straight across, 1 times 1 times 1, which is just 1. And then we multiply the denominators, 16 to the 3 halves times x to the 6 times y to the 9th. Well, I can't really do anything with that. But I can write them all together, being multiplied like this, so that they're all in just one fraction. They're all the denominator of one larger fraction. Now, to get back to what I was talking about with the 16 to the 3 halves. 16 to the 3 halves, it might not be familiar written to you this way, but the denominator is the number outside the radical, and the numerator is the number inside the radical. Now, you can do this as 16 cubed and then take the square root, or you can take the square root first and then cube it, which I'm going to do because it's easier to do the mental arithmetic. The square root of 16 is simply 4. So I'm going to take the square root first, leaving me with 4, but I still have to cube the result. All I've done is I've dealt with the square root. I haven't dealt with the cube yet. x to the 6, y to the 9th. And then we should have 4 cubed is 2 to the 6, so this should be 64 x to the 6, y to the 9th. Now, there's another way we could have handled this problem. And it's perfectly reasonable to do it in an alternate way. What you'd want to do is you'd want to take care of the negative exponents first. Rather than distributing everything out as much as possible and having three negatives and three fractions which then combine back into just one thing, what if we dealt with the negative exponent first? So we put all of this in the denominator And then our power, our exponent, 3 halves, goes from a minus to a plus. Well, now we can do the same kind of thing, but just in the denominator. So 3 halves will distribute to the 16, x to the fourth, y to the sixth. Then we'll multiply that positive 3 halves times all these exponents. 
get something like 16 to the 3 halves, x to the 3 halves, or excuse me, that should be x to the 4th to the 3 halves, y to the 6th to the positive 3 halves. So you s distribute the 3 halves to each of the factors, and it's going to look a lot like what we have here, except everything's already in the denominator, and the exponents are positive instead of negative. Sixteen to the three halves, x to the six, y to the ninth, and then we're right back here, so we'd finish it off in just the same way that we did here. Deal with the sixteen to the three halves.